Hey, I'm Blazing Dave, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Burke, and there's going to be a video on our Philadelphia Phillies signing veteran slugger Kyle Schwarber to a four-year deal, plus them picking up an interesting pitcher as well in Dylan Maples, who was successful in his first run in the bigs. Well, it wasn't his first run in the bigs, but his first successful run in the bigs last year with the Cubs. But Kyle Schwarber going into him, he was good in two different spots last year. For the Nationals, he was able to get it done in, a, in over 200 at-bats and in over 100 for the Boston Red Sox. He was obviously a very pivotal part of their team. Uh, Schwerber is an interesting commodity because uh, for his career, he's been a great slugger that's hit more in the 230s career average. But then when you look at recency, where everything goes by, what have you done for me lately? Um, in 2020, that was in 59 games. In 59 games, that was that weird crap hole of a season in 2020. So I don't even count that for guys that struggle. Just like in the NHL when there was that crap hole of a COVID season, they were off for three months. Those are completely different extra circumstances. You don't have the same things to be able to do to that you do in routine-wise because of the COVID restrictions, and I think that plays into everything. So screw 2020. But 2019, uh, he played really well with the Cubs. Uh, he also played pretty solid in 2018. He only hit 238, but the man had, um, when it came to an RBI total, uh, 61 with 26 home runs, and if he's able to have 26 home runs uh, with the Phillies, that would be great. If he's able to get up to the 32 uh, he had total in 2021, that's even better, where I think Kyle Schwarber here in Philadelphia is likely to get more towards the 30 mark, because obviously when the ball gets flying in Citizens Bank Park in the summer heat, that thing gets going a good bit. So I do think Kyle Schwarber here fits in well. And my good friend, while texting him about it, uh, did make a good point, too. Schwerber also fits in a little bit better structurally with um, if you're still going to be able to bring in a guy, say, like a Chris Bryant, just because you can play Schwerber at first base, you can play Schwerber at DH, you can play Schwerber in left field, then you can put Bryant at third base, put Bohm at DH. It kind of offers more stuff. Where if you bring in a Castellanos, he's one of the best overall hitters in baseball and a better for average and just overall contact hitter than Chris Bryant. But the difference is he's not a good fielder at really any position. So he's more of just a DH that you can put at third base, but he's not going to field the position great. You can put at first base or field that position okay. And you could put in the outfield, and he's not going to field that position that great. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do. Obviously, if he's hitting that well, you don't really need to worry about the fielding uh, when it comes to Nick Castellanos. But I do think adding Kyle Schwarber, if the Phillies are able to get another big name, <clears throat> I would say they would probably have more interest in Chris Bryant because Schwarber is obviously not the quickest fielder out there. If he's in left field, he's a guy that can catch it if he's able to get to the ball. I don't think he's actually as bad of a fielder as some people rank him to be. It's just he's not quick enough to get to certain balls, and that's the issue with him. Well, that's also the same issue with Nick. So uh, I think it will be interesting, and that's also with Nacianos. It's not necessarily his speed with Nacianos because he has a good stride. It's more his reaction time as a fielder. But either way, they're both not the best fielders. That's why I think Chris Bryant mixed in with him would be a perfect match made in heaven. But we'll see if the Phillies are able to even get Chris Bryant or if he some for whatever reason goes to the Rockies um, and, or if he ends up going to any other team as well. But first and foremost, I like this deal for the Phillies. I don't think he is the best, obviously, in terms of batting average. And people have been commenting that in the groups. But I'm here to tell you, especially in today's game, batting average is not the biggest thing in baseball anymore. If you want to disagree with that, that's perfectly fine. But if you say it's still one of the main caveats that teams look for, look around the league, and every analyst, every expert says this is kind of a, more of a home run or bust league, and I don't love that either. But I do think when you have a guy that has peak RBI and home run potential like Schwarber, you don't need to, if you hit 26 to 36 home runs a year, you don't need to hit 330. I mean, if you do that, you're one of the best players of all time. If you hit 300, you're one of the best players of all time. If you hit consistently 26 or more home runs a year and you also have that average. Schwarber is one of the better sluggers in the game. He's not one of the best players in the game, but he's one of the better sluggers in the game. And a lot of those guys, like Joey Gallo, for example, don't always have the best batting average. And when Encarnacion during his course of the career didn't always have the best batting average, but they were always good sluggers and able to get it done. So Adam Dunn, during the course of his career, was a great slugger, never had a good batting average. So kind of those things, so to speak. But when it comes to Dylan Maples, to conclude in this video, 
He's an interesting pitcher because he features a good cutter fastball combination where he also misses in a sinker and a curve. But with him, he in, his, in 59 career games, he wasn't able to really find success until last year in 28 games with the Cubs. He was able to locate the zone, be more poised with his pitches, trust his stuff, and that's when he was able to get a good result. So this is a signing I really like for our Phillies as a good potential guy to be a reliever for the team because if he's coming in with the confidence from last year, and the feel for his stuff that he had last year, he had a very good sub-3 uh, three ERA out of the bullpen in 28 games. I said 21 or it was actually 28 games, so even better. Um, So he's a guy that I think is potentially a late-blooming reliever. And as I've said in other videos, relief pitching is the most up-and-down thing in probably all professional sports. Like I did a video on Kevin McCarthy the other day. The first two years of his career after his cup of coffee year were great. And then since he struggled, and then maybe now he can rebound this year with the Chicago Cubs, uh, actually, the team that Tillon Maple uh, was originally on. So it's going to be interesting to see if with the Phillies, and when Maples is able to come in, keep the same mindset he had last year, keep the same motion he had last year, and keep the same pizzazz on his pitches he had last year to have the success he had in Chicago in 28 games. But I think that's definitely an interesting small pickup that has a chance to actually become a relief pitcher in the middle relief category for our Philadelphia Phillies. This has been the latest edition of the Philadelphia Phillies Sports Fan News Podcast as our Phillies sign Kyle Schwarber and also bring in a good, interesting pitcher in Dylan Maples. Peace out, everybody, and please remember to subscribe above or down below on the easy to use widget to keep us growing to 215 by the end of March or more. Really appreciate your love and support. Peace out, everybody, and go Phillies.